does a performance shoe make a good lifestyle option? Well, the answer is yes. But the longer, more complicated answer is yes, but. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the but when I break down the Air Jordan 36. get into it. Now I do want to say up front that this is not a performance review of the Air Jordan 36. You should still stick around though, because if you are interested in buying a pair of these to wear day to day, I can definitely give you my opinion of how I think these fare. And also, while you're at it, you might as well hit the subscribe button and like the video if you get anything out of it. And while I'm at it, I might as well thank everyone who has subscribed, watched, liked or commented on any one of my videos. Your support really, really really does mean a lot. Back to the shoe. And the reason why I wanted to give that disclaimer up front about this not being a performance review is because whenever you see a very simple model name come out from the brand, Air Jordan, followed by a set of Roman numerals, you know that you're getting the flagship performance model from the brand. They do release other performance options throughout the year, as well as a bunch of retro and lifestyle only models. But this model is generally the one where they put all of their latest and greatest tech. Now, what I'm not saying is that it is the latest and greatest basketball shoe. I'll leave that to the experts to talk about. But what we are getting in this package is a silhouette that I quite like. But if I'm being completely honest, it's not a completely new design of a Jordan shoe. I sort of look at the 36 as more of a 34 Mark III because I see elements of the 34 in the 35 and then I see elements of the 35 in the 36. It feels like it's been more of an incremental design journey for the brand more than it's been about completely redesigning the shoe itself. Having said that though, I remember reading that one of their objectives with creating the 36 was to create as lightweight a shoe as possible. And that's something that they've definitely done here. In hand, this actually feels quite light, despite how hefty it may look. Luckily for them as well, they've got a great design base to work from. Well, at least I think so anyway. I really like the way that the tongue kind of soars over the highest part of the heel. And I like the way that the shoe kind of sort of doesn't look like a mid but it is almost like a low top mid. But what I can say is on foot, it definitely does wrap around your ankle. Well, it wraps around my ankle at least. So it does give you lockdown around that area and it's definitely a mid. Over the last few years, I've only bought a single colorway of each of the flagship Jordan models. Last year, it was the DNA for the 35. The year before that, it was a more subdued black and white number for the 34. But this year, when I saw the images leak on the 36 colorways, I knew exactly which one I wanted to have. And it was the Psychic Energy colorway. The reason being, I love the use of colors here. It's a classic combination of white, black, and red. And I really like the way that they've used those colors as part of the color blocking in this shoe. It's got what is a predominantly white bottom half with a black top half. Well, more like a black top two thirds, but neither here nor there. And the way that they've used the red is really nice because it's more of an accent detail. So it's not overdone, but it definitely gives you the right impact. This pinstripe that runs along the midsole and then the branding on the tongue and under the foot, on the forefoot. What's really nice is also the way that those materials have been treated. So the red and there's parts of the white that have this almost glistening metallic -y type finish and it just looks really good on foot and in stores and in hand. 
well it looks good any way you look at it as far as the upper goes we've got a couple of different materials here we've got leather to add a little bit of a premium feel to the shoe itself and that leather is used in the tongue and on the top and bottom parts of the back end of the shoe that leather is textured and it actually feels quite nice to touch it the heel itself is nicely padded the tongue very lightly padded but they don't provide me any issues on foot the rest of the material or the white part that you can see on the shoe itself is called a jacquard nino now wait a second it's a jacquard lino weave sorry i had to look that up and i had to look it up when i was trying to figure out what i wanted to say for the review because it was a material that felt unfamiliar to me it kind of feels like a well ventilated hessian bag Anyway, but by far the most striking feature of the Air Jordan 36 has to be the Eclipse plate. This hollowed out section in the midsole in the center of the foot. That does have a purpose though. And if you're wondering what that purpose is, it's basically there to provide stability. If you think about the movements that a basketball player does, these sudden type of snappy movements, I don't know if that's like a technical term, if you think about the support that a basketball player needs, especially with the movements that they're doing on the court, these short, sharp movements, you need to make sure that the foot isn't twisting and is providing as much lateral support as possible. What you don't want is a completely stiff experience because you still need a level of propulsion and cushion and get the benefits of whatever type of cushioning system the shoe uses. And as far as the cushioning setup goes in the Air Jordan 36, what we're getting is a full length air zoom strobel with a zoom air unit stacked in the forefoot. If you're not familiar with a strobel or a strobel board the best way i can explain it to you is to imagine a shoe or this shoe or any shoe that uses this construction method without the midsole or outsole what you've basically got left is the upper the upper does have a bottom that is then attached to the midsole and outsole setup but that material that the upper is attached to isn't the same as the material that's used in the rest of the shoe what's normally attached to the upper is a fabric or textile type of material and i really like what nike have done here they've seen an opportunity to integrate some of their cushioning technology into the strobel board and place that zoom air cushion directly underfoot now, as far as fit and comfort goes, I'll talk about fit first. For a sizing recommendation, I would recommend going true to size. I've spoken about this before, but I found the more modern Jordans to be less forgiving than the retros and even the lifestyle orientated versions. But with the Jordan 34, 35, 36, those flagship or super performance orientated shoes, I find them to be even less forgiving than any other shoe that they sell. Going down half a size can actually make it a really uncomfortable shoe. And now that we talk about how they perform day to day, that's gonna be really important. This shoe is not that comfortable to wear day to day. I'll be honest. It's actually quite a stiff feeling shoe from the top to the bottom. The upper isn't that bad. I know I described it as a well ventilated Hessian bag, but it actually doesn't feel that bad on foot. It's just not super flexible. And while it's breathable, there are a lot of more comfortable options out there if you're looking to wear something for long periods of time. The same goes underfoot. I can see where the benefits are in having the Eclipse plate and the cushioning setup that the shoe's got, but overall it's quite stiff. I appreciate that the shoe would break in over time, but for $270 here in Australia, your money might be better spent elsewhere, even within Jordan's own range. For me, I guess I kind of see sneakers as being my thing, it's my outlet, it's the thing that I love to talk about, to buy, to wear, and so I can justify having at least one pair, and I really like the design, I like the look, and they're okay as long as I'm wearing it for a short period of time. If you're watching this video though, and you're thinking about buying a pair because you want to wear them for hours and hours a day, days and days and days in a row, I'd probably tell you to save your no I am going to tell you to save your money and buy something else. It's just too expensive to spend for that sort of thing and if you really 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 like it just wait a year or before the next model comes out and then you'll be able to get one of these on discount. 
that's my thoughts anyway. I'm interested in what you've got to say. Let me know in the comments below. But until the next video, laters.